Oh my god, I swear to god, this thing just looked at me. Oh my Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to part one million or something like that of watching TikToks together. TikToks that you guys tagged me in that are super creepy and we watch them together and decide if they're real or fake. We're gonna go over 10 super creepy TikToks today. We are starting right off the bat with the one that I teased you with, which is the monkey doll one. We're gonna do that as number one, but we do have a sponsor for today's video. So I'm gonna roll to the ad read and I will be right back with you. Today's sponsor is June's Journey. After a long day of working, I always give myself some time in the evening to be intentionally non-productive. And in order to relax, I play June's Journey. June's Journey is a free to download mobile game that's set in the 1920s. It's a hidden objects game with a fun murder mystery story to go along with it. This game is fun, but it's also just aesthetic. The graphics are super colorful and the scenes are so beautiful. I feel like I'm there. I always play in the evenings just to unwind and relax with my dog or over lunch between filming for videos to give myself a nice mental break. There is a special event going on in the game until March 27th, so hurry up and download it today. For all players after chapter six, each secret is a unique short story that dives into the past of the different characters. Complete the hidden object scenes in the silhouette mode to discover unexpected twists and turns in the story. Scandalous affairs, hushed crimes, forbidden love, anything could come to light as you uncover the secrets of your most beloved and hated characters. Download June's Journey for free by clicking the link right below this video in the description box. June's Journey is available on Android and iOS mobile devices, as well as on your PC through Facebook games. Let's get right into it. So the first video we're gonna watch today is a username's Dingbat Cass's video, and this is about the monkey doll she bought, as you saw at the very beginning of this video. I was tagged in this one quite a bit, which always tells me that I need to look into it. Oh my fucking God, I swear to God, this thing just looked at me, oh my short but sweet. I'll replay it for you guys a couple times over here in slow-mo so you can see what it is that everybody's freaking out over. This video of hers has over 53 million views right now, which even for a viral TikTok, that is a lot. Most of her videos now are of this monkey doll and how it is supposedly haunted. She even tags haunted doll a lot in her videos. I will admit this video did get me at first. Regardless of the explanation, it's pretty creepy. But she said she got this doll off of Amazon, so let's find it ourselves, shall we? Here is the doll. All you have to do is look up baby monkey doll on Amazon on, and it's in the first damn row. It's about $150, but it's like a collector's item. It's a little bit more, it's high quality and stuff. Honestly, she is super cute. And sure enough, her name is Annabelle's Hugs. No, that's just been freaking people out because the haunted doll, famous haunted doll, Annabelle, and then this one's name is Annabelle, but it says it right on the website. Her name is Annabelle Hugs because the doll is meant to hug. It's supposed to like drape around you like a monkey. If you look at the reviews, no one is saying that the eyes move or that anything scary has happened with their dolls. Many other people have bought this exact same one. Someone was also way ahead of me because this video was posted on January 19th. And one of the questions on the Amazon page the next day on January 20th was, do the eyes move at all? And as you could see, multiple replies say no they do not so that would lead us to think that perhaps this particular one the doll that she bought is haunted and that's proof because the eyes don't move on the other ones but the eyes do move on hers but the description on some of the reviews do state that the eyes are supposed to look very realistic just like the whole doll is supposed to look very realistic. So naturally I screen record all these videos. I slowed it down and watched that moment where the monkey looks like it's looking at her and I watched it over and over and over again. Then I took a picture of the very frame where the monkey seems to be glancing at us. I zoomed way in and turned up the brightness. Here is my photo of that. So if you look very carefully, the white part of the eyes 
that is giving us the illusion the eyes are moving is only in the middle of the eye. It's black on the other side right here, which means this white part is simply a reflection that kind of looks like the whites of an eye when eyes move. The lighting of the room, if you notice that she takes this video in, is very dark. If you replay the video slowly, like I will do for you here, if you notice, right when she moves the paper up is when the eyes move. Look at that. It's dark and the lamp is over the monkey's head over here. So what you're seeing is a reaction to where the light is in the room and a reflection of the white paper on the monkey's eyes. So is this a hoax? I mean, to be fair, she could have set this up. Maybe she started unboxing it, noticed the way the eyes looked when she moved the paper, and so she closed it up and took a video of it and then acted shock. It would explain her very timely, dramatic reaction. However, I could totally see her not having made this up whatsoever. She literally was just filming an unboxing of the monkey because she was excited to get it, and it was a pretty expensive doll, and that happened to happen and it scared her. So it could be that it's not a hoax to her, but it just happened to look like it. It's still fake. And honestly, if my video got 53 million views, I would probably be milking it too. So it explain why all these videos about her quote unquote haunted monkey are all over her page now. This next video is from the user Your Mind Is Mine. And I got tagged in other videos about the same topic, but this user explains the whole thing pretty well. So we're gonna watch that together first. Okay, so like this young chap explained in his video, this goes back to 2019 when this first started going viral and there were some sightings of her, but then she seemed to disappear and now this has come back in 2023 with more sightings than ever. I got tagged in some other videos about this same phenomenon, one of them specifically of some girls that uh, claimed that they followed this Serbian woman after they saw her dancing in the street and when they asked if she was okay, she did wield a weapon. So here, I'll show you that video. Yes, <laughs> dobro. <laughs> However, the problem with this entire story is that it's just an urban legend that people are playing out to go viral because there's no proof of 
some woman in Serbia or anywhere in the world for that matter coming out at night, dancing like this at midnight, and then actually harming somebody after they ask if she's okay. There's no proof that anybody has actually started chasing after somebody with a weapon after this. This is so similar to the clown sightings phenomenon. It's just another example of rumors getting out of control and people thinking something is dangerous just because they keep hearing about it and because the sightings themselves are creepy, which I totally agree, they are creepy. And then it just gets out of hand and pretty much turns into a creepypasta. The original video from 2019, I don't know if that one is technically a hoax or not. That could have been a woman in Serbia that was actually doing this ritualistic dance. That one also could have been set up very easily, but we have no way of knowing. But it also could have not been. I don't think she pulled out a weapon, but she could have been creepishly dancing in the street. And that's what started these rumors. The more viral videos that are happening now in 2023 are definitely set up. The one that I showed you of the girls, why is the Serbian woman have a shower cap on? Like that looks like a clear shower cap, like one they give you at the hotel. And these girls had one left over in a closet it that they found and they put it on her. They put a bunch of layers on their friend and the shower cap to disguise her because if they didn't and they, people could identify her hair, they might identify her friend in other videos and it would be really easy to catch her faking this. I just... It's weird. I don't know why if this was real, she'd be wearing a shower cap. That makes no sense. And just people need to remember that if there was really a woman doing this, luring people into wondering what she's doing and then actually harming them, it would be on the news. We'd be able to identify the victims of these crimes. These are crimes that are happening. We'd be able to find news articles about it. So do I recommend walking around the streets alone at night at midnight? Of course not. I don't recommend anybody does that, especially, I mean, depending on where you live. But I believe that this is simply an urban legend that is going viral. This next video is from J Viral. I want to give you guys a big uh, content warning for this next one. It involves somebody on a plane and the audio that is used sounds very scary of people in distress. It's just kind of disturbing. If you have a big fear of planes, you may not want to watch this one. <laughs> Thank you, by the way, for tagging me in this one as I'm traveling next week. So love that for me. This video was posted by Jay Viral on March 17th, just a few days ago, and everybody's freaking out because he hasn't posted since, at least as of filming. It currently has 9.2 million views. This is fake. Don't worry. This is fake. This guy is fine. This plane that he was on did not crash. This creator last posted in April, 2022, which was almost a year ago. And he only has four videos on his channel total. So he always goes a long time without posting. He's obviously not that active on TikTok. So that explains why he hasn't posted since this video. Two, a lot of people in the comments are saying that this was the Nepal flight tragedy that just happened at the beginning of this year. So that was just in January of this year, there was a very tragic plane accident that happened in Nepal where 72 people lost their lives. I'm not sure how J Viral would have posted this video on March 17th when the Nepal tragedy happened in January, but okay, especially when there were no survivors. But regardless, this is not that video. I did find a video from the Nepal flight that I think somebody was filming in the middle of that and they did catch it all on their cell phone and that video is something else but it's not this video so the third point is that j viral just posts him on this plane he doesn't look scared he just looks neutral which i mean i'm not judging how somebody would act in a very very terrible situation some people do just go into shock and don't react and i have heard that some people in actual plane tragedies that survive do end up being very calm but he doesn't show anybody else on the plane which is red flag number one and it looks like it's raining outside but other than that it doesn't look like anything could be wrong 
He simply added this scary caption and a different audio onto a small clip of him on a plane to freak people out. This was debunked actually not by me, but another user on TikTok named Husky713. They posted a video of where the audio came from. It's a clip that was originally posted on Twitter. Turns out it was actually from a Spirit Airlines flight. A group of people on the plane were panicking and making the sounds that you hear in Jay Viral's video, but it was because there was a ton of condensation from the AC on the aircraft and a group of nervous passengers thought that the plane was on fire. So J Viral's video is total BS. Don't get me wrong, I have a lot of sympathy and empathy for the people that were panicking on the condensation plane because I, as someone who's actually had a full on panic attack on a plane before because of very rough turbulence, I get it. If you're already have like a phobia on planes and you've mustered up the courage to take a flight, you're gonna have really bad anxiety the whole time and assume the worst anytime anything different happens. So I'm gonna take a really, really quick detour here and give you guys my plane advice. Like I said, I'm traveling next week and my plane phobia has been very, very much decreased over the years. And I'm gonna tell you why, because if you're having this trouble, I wanna help you. And maybe these tips will help you too. Now, this might not help people with actual diagnosed severe phobias. I'm not saying it'll help everybody, but it might help if planes just like make you nervous. So my best advice is to go to the channel on YouTube called 74 Gear. This is a channel of a pilot. His name is Kelsey, I believe. He is so amazing. He makes great content. He reacts to a lot of scary plane propaganda that's posted on TikToks and debunks the lies. He gives you a lot of behind the scenes about what it's like to be a pilot. And he also goes through thorough explanations of all the safety measures that they have in place and what they would do in different situations. Watch a lot of his videos because I watched a lot of his videos and over time it really helped me because he's just so freaking calm and he's on airplanes hours and hours and hours and hours every single week. He's on airplanes all the time. He's great. Another great thing to do is watch flight attendant day in the life vlogs because watching those will also just normalize it and make it feel not as scary for you to go on one flight when you see flight attendants taking a billion flights. Every, I don't know how many flights they take every day, but going on flights for multiple days at a time nonstop and that's just totally normal for them and they are not concerned about it whatsoever. If you're actually on the plane, my two pieces of advice are this. One, watch the flight attendants. If you're ever nervous, find a flight attendant and look at them and see if they are not panicking, if they don't look concerned, you don't have to be concerned. My second piece of advice, which is not a solve all, but it definitely helps, is if you're comfortable with it, ask your doctor for some Xanax. Because if you take a little bit of Xanax about an hour before your flight, after you go through security, it, it doesn't make it perfect, but it helps a whole hell of a lot. And you're just gonna have a much nicer ride. Sorry for the detour. We're going to get right back into the video. I just wanted to share that because those are the things that have really helped me over the years. Okay, let's do a little bit shorter one. This one is John Wooden's video. And this is another like one of those strange things in the sky. So I will admit this does look like something right out of Stranger Things, but turns out this one is another cool weather phenomenon. We did light pillars last video when everybody thought that was a UFO over Las Vegas. This video was taken back in February over Sydney, Australia over a body of water. And turns out this is actually a scud cloud. The weather channel, the verified weather channels account commented on this video and confirmed that it was a scud cloud. According to Wiki, a a scud cloud is a type of fractus cloud at low height above ground, detached and of irregular form. 
According to a Yahoo article about this specific TikTok video, Martin Singh from the School of Earth, Atmosphere, and Environment at Monash University agreed, quote, it is indeed a strange looking formation, but he confirmed it was a scud cloud officially called a panis, or at least something similar. Honestly, to me, it looks more like CGI, and it doesn't really look like the other photos of scud clouds on Google Images. But also, like, I am no weather expert by any means, so I think I'm going to believe the experts and the actual weather channel over some photos on Google. This, I mean, different scud clouds could vary in form and shape and color quite a bit. Number five, I also got tagged in this one quite a bit. This video is not from the actual creator. The actual creator of what we're about to talk about is a viral post on Reddit. This video I was tagged in is somebody named Heart Starts Pounding, that's their TikTok account, talking about this Reddit post. So let's watch that and then we'll talk about it. Brace yourself, this one is a little longer. I saved the longest one for the middle of the video. Now that I've seen it, I can't unsee it. So the other day, a Reddit user posted this photo to Reddit. It's of his apartment at night. He had been complaining of hearing rustling noises in his apartment over the last couple nights. Many users thought they could kind of see something in this area of his kitchen, but I couldn't. So I looked at the Brighton version. This is the photo brightened. And I know what you're gonna say, yes, it does look like Keanu Reeves, but look at how tall he is compared to the fridge. But it gets so much worse. This is a video he took of his apartment at night where you can see something happen to the light in the kitchen. But let's look at the Brighton version. Yes, it's terrifying, but is it a ghost? No. The answer is no. Moving on. I'm just kidding. I'll explain it. Let's talk about the original Reddit post first. So the original Reddit posts are from user failed talk show host, which tracks on Reddit slash ghosts. They posted a series. So they posted three different posts about this quote unquote ghost. The first one was of the photo referenced in the video. And like she said in the video, if you turn the brightness up, there is a creepy looking man figure in OP's kitchen. His second post though is a continuation of the photos and he claims that they are more photos from the same night compared to the daytime pics he used Samsung's night mode. But OP clarifies in the comments that he took the photos from his camera while he was standing there. He didn't set up a camera and leave, so he happened to capture it. Okay, so before we move on to the third post, which is the video she talks about, let's debunk this particular one first. After people started asking questions, at least according to the comments, OP conveniently deleted the second post with the pictures. The biggest issue that people were having that they were asking questions about was that random stuff in his photos moved. If you look, the red object on the table in the foreground is noticeably different in one picture to another. And then there is stuff on the counter over there. That stuff has also moved from one photo to another. OP claims that these photos were taken from various times throughout the night, but that doesn't really clear it up. That means somebody turned on the light, went in the kitchen, made a sandwich or did something, you know, somebody that lived in the house and then they turned off the light and then the thing, the apparition was still in the photos later. Like the apparition is only in photos and not there when you turn the light on. That doesn't make sense either because he said he's taken pictures in the daytime when it was just dark back there. The most likely explanation is that the photos are simply edited and OP added the ghost into more photos after the first one got so much attention. Either way, there's already inconsistencies in his story and this made a lot of people already not trust OP and what he was telling us. Okay, so now here's the third post that he made, which includes the video of the thing moving in the kitchen that Heart Starts Pounding talked about in her video. Now, it's important to note that the video he posts, he says this, the OP says that the video he posts is slowed down so you can see the movement better. When somebody asked what the sound in the background was, cause that was super creepy.
OP said that it was simply the television in the other room and it sounds distorted because like he explained, the video was slowed down to show the movement. But to me and many other skeptical Redditors, if you speed the video back up or even if you don't and leave it in slow-mo and brighten it up, honestly, it looks like some dude in a scream mask and a cloak. This other inconsistency was found and caught by somebody else in the comments. This credit goes to them. This was not my theory, but somebody made a really good point that you could see in the video that the figure covers the little green light, the little microwave or stove clock light that we see in the dark, that little green thing there. So that means the figure is solid, solid enough to cover a light at one point, which means it could very well be a person. And so of course, naturally people are afraid that maybe it's not a ghost at all, but maybe there's a squatter in the house. We've heard of those news stories, right? Of people hiding somewhere in your house and then coming out at night and stealing your food and stuff. But that explanation doesn't make any sense either. Because if the TV was on in the back, background as not only did we hear, but OP admitted to, why would a squatter come out of their hiding place when there was obviously people moving around the house? Things would also be missing from the kitchen and OP never mentions anything ever going missing. In one comment, OP also claims that he was out getting groceries and pizza and that his girlfriend slash roommate was home, meaning either his roommate is his girlfriend or he has a girlfriend and a roommate living there and she slash they were the ones watching TV. He does seem to imply in the comments that his girlfriend is his roommate and vice versa, which is strange to some people, but that's besides the point. But if it was only his girlfriend, why would he leave her there alone with a suspected ghost and or intruder, leave his phone set up to film the kitchen, and she stays there alone while her boyfriend goes and runs errands without his phone on him, who would do that? No one. Okay, so if it's not an intruder, then maybe it is a ghost, but that also doesn't make any sense because in the video, this is again that Reddit comment that pointed this out, the figure is moving really jerkily, which I believe is actually a word, and you could see in the brightened up version that it's like looking around and like dodging around as if it's some creepy demon thing. And it like, it's looking around like it doesn't want to get caught or it's looking for somebody who sees him. But why would a ghost be concerned with anybody watching him or a demon for that matter? That makes no sense. So both possible theories are ruled out. And then as other Redditors pointed out, the video conveniently cuts out right when the figure seems to be like it's going to move towards the camera. This is 1000% OP or OP's friend in a robe and a mask playing poltergeist. The next video that we're going to talk about is from the account The Shun. Shaano Barbers. I'm really sorry. I'm probably butchering that name. It is supposed proof of the Mandela effect. This one's interesting. Look at that. But yet, it never existed. If you don't know what this video is about, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that everybody in my audience knows what the Mandela effect is by now. Um, if you don't know this particular Mandela effect that's very popular, there is a lot of people that supposedly remember this movie that he's showing us, Shazam, that stars Sinbad. But the real movie that we think most people are misremembering is the movie Kazam with Shaquille O'Neal. Both movies are about a genie helping some kids. So this, <laughs> the nerve of this person <laughs> to try and gaslight us all like this and acting as though we're all the jackasses is just like the audacity. 
If you pause this video and zoom in nice and close and read, the VHS tape says things like Flintstones home video, which if you recall, there's a lot of Mandela effects attached to the Flintstones. It also says things like this film has been modified from its original universe. This tape may or may not be an artifact or residue from an alternate timeline. It has references to other Mandela effects on the back and the description of the movie it is so clearly a mandela novelty that he bought of oh look what's that oh simple google search you can buy it for 15 dollars off a website called champagne video store Dot com and it clearly says in the description that it is a novelty item and not a real VHS tape. I wish that was the end of this one, but it's not because this dude doubles down and he keeps posting videos. So the next one, he posts a clip from the movie, but again... <laughs> the audacity. I don't know if he thinks we're just idiots. I have no idea. But the very top comment or like... Dude, everybody's telling him this is an April Fool's joke. College Humor made these clips of the movie on April 1st, 2017. And sure enough, a simple Google search. This is on YouTube. It's from College Humor. They did it as a joke because of the Mandela effect in 2017. And then according to a Snopes article, there was another popular VHS photo of the movie going around, but it turned out to be completely photoshopped. And then if you just Google image the movie, there are so many different covers that people have created over the years. They're all fake. This movie has never been on IMBD and no one is willing to put their alleged copies of it into a VHS player and show us some of the actual movie. He then posts a video with a different cover, which again looks weirdly new to be at least 20, if not almost 30 years old. This movie was supposedly made in the mid 1990s. And again, this person refuses to actually put it in a VHS player and show us clips from this movie. If this was real, somebody would be able to prove it with clips. The Mandela effect is simply false memories. I'm really sorry. I hate to break it to you guys, but there's no solid proof that anything in the Mandela effect has ever really been true. The Febreze, the Kit Kats, Jif, Jiffy, whatever it is. Like, I'm really sorry. I personally am okay with it though, because I think the Mandela effect phenomenon, the psychological phenomenon of large groups of people that don't know each other having false memories all around the same thing is far more fascinating than if we were to live in an alternate universe. Like, it's really effing cool what human brains do. Okay. Anyway, let's move on to another fun one that is kind of around the same lines. This is from the Thought Police's TikTok account. I keep getting tagged in this. I wasn't going to cover this one, but I keep getting tagged in it so much that I feel like I have to at this point. This whole account is devoted to showing us quote unquote parallel dimensions through a phone and old non-smartphone specifically before 2008. So here's the one I was tagged in. So this is another one that I don't really think needs that much of an explanation to explain why it's fake. I mean, if this were real, then that would literally mean actual magic is real. So I don't think that's it. I'm pretty sure that this is just set up, but I'll still tell you these videos are simply edited. He's either using a green screen or he's very carefully pre-recording videos. I'm assuming he's finding these labels, either photoshopping themselves or finding these labels online that other people have made as examples of vintage things or Mandela effect things. And he's lining them up with the video perfectly and then taking a video of that. Additionally, if you look on TikTok, there's been a few different people that try to recreate this. They try to get an old phone from before 2008 and try to do follow the exact same steps that he's doing. And of course, duh, it doesn't work because this is just for entertainment and he's just doing a cool, unique thing. This, I'm not mad at though. It's honestly a really cool concept to me. And this guy is balls to the walls great at editing because it is very hard to catch any mistakes. But we are going to talk about just one of them that kind of 
proves my point. There is one that he makes of Lilo and Stitch. People remember the movie and this scene of the sister, I believe it is, always climbing up on the dryer, Lilo coming out of the dryer, and then her sister sneaking up behind her and capturing her. But the one that we see now, she's coming out of a pizza box from under a table, not a dryer. He used this in one of the videos showing the dryer on his old phone and the pizza box in quote unquote real life. But many of the comments pointed out that this is not a Mandela effect at all. This was actually a real thing. Apparently when Lilo and Stitch came out and this scene was in the movie, parents rightfully freaked out thinking that their kids were going to climb in the dryer. It was a very popular children's movie at the time. I remember how big of a deal this movie was when it came out and they were afraid that little kids were going to see Lilo doing this and get excited and do the same thing and also climb in the dryer, which makes sense. So they changed it to a table slash pizza box. Both of these have always existed, so it just kind of shows a flaw in his premise. Either way, like I said, really cool videos. Okay, Jenny Feelings is the next one, is from her videos. This is a doll one, so brace yourself. This doll was so terrifying, she never even made it inside my house. From the moment I purchased her at the thrift store, I noticed something unusual. Her lips appeared to be painted in blood. Her very detailed clothing appeared to be hand-stitched. But the most horrific thing about her was how her mouth would just draw you in. And she had one sharp fang that would shape-shift and move right before your eyes. I decided to video it. I tried to shine my light in the best I could. I was very shaky because it was dark and I was scared. And her mouth was light. And I tried not to show it. How we've Sorry. Oh my god, that was creepy. Where's the light? No, I just can't see inside. I don't understand. There's the light. Oh, what? Oh, there it is. Okay, there's the light. Ah! It's scary. Okay, there's the light. I don't know. So basically there's a... I don't know. I can't explain it. I can't show y'all what I see with my own eyes. I don't know what's going on in there. It's just hard to tell you. So there's a lot of follow-up videos about this doll. The overwhelming consensus from people in the comments is one of two theories, and it's not being haunted. It's a maggot of some sort or some disgusting bug living in there that moves from time to time but won't come out, or it has a nest in there and it's moving and it shakes the nest around, something like that which honestly makes the most sense to me. Or there is a theory that there's a hole in the doll's 
head in the back and so it's the light reflecting through the hole or that maybe she put a small candle in there or something and so when she moves the camera it makes it look like it's changing shape. So there's something th that people need to understand about this video though, because it is not abundantly clear at first when you watch it or even when you watch all the other videos. So it makes it very confusing. But something to understand is that according to the poster, according to her, she bought this haunted doll. It was so creepy. She never even let it go in the house. So she kept it outside. So that's why you can hear circadias in the background. So according to her, that video was taken last year in 2022. And then she sold the doll on eBay in August 2022. She had the footage, but happened not to post it on TikTok until now until you know what 2023 and so that makes things complicated she does show proof of this because she shows proof of her chatting with the buyer of the doll and sure enough they have a text exchange all the way back from april 2022 so i do believe she's telling the truth about that but it makes the entire story very difficult for anybody to believe Naturally, people were asking her to prove that this wasn't a maggot by shining a light closer in there, setting up a tripod so that the camera's not moving in case the camera moving was making it look like the thing was moving, poking some tweezers in there to see what the heck it is, or just poking it at all to see if poking it makes it move. All this logical stuff that people would naturally ask. She says she's scared of the doll, and so she never did anything like that or got close enough to poke it, which I find odd because anybody who's not scared enough to buy a haunted doll is too scared to touch it, seems odd, but okay, whatever, I'll let that one go. Then in another video, she says how it's, she's confirmed, it's not a bug, it's not a snake, it's not a spider, it's not like a nest or whatever, but she doesn't explain how she knows that. The most common question I get is what is in her mouth? And I suppose that's the secret she holds. I can tell you what it is not. It's not a snake or a spider or a bug or a worm or a caterpillar. It's not a nest or anything alive. And then she keeps saying in a lot of the videos, like people are gonna pick it apart anyway. Skeptics are going to not believe me no matter what, which is fine. This is really for the people that want to know more, but I'm sure some of you will pick it apart. And no, she's not mean about it. She's not bitter about it or anything, but still like you can't say that something is a fact without any proof to back it up and then say that we're the ones that are just being annoying because we're just not believing her blindly. Prove that it's not a bug. How do you know it's not a bug? If you never poked in there or anything, how the hell do you know what it is? You have absolutely nothing to back up that claim and you sold it before you could find out. So don't expect us to take trust me bro as proof. That's just not fair, especially with how much fake crap there is on TikTok. It's really unfair to expect us to just believe you for no reason. We don't know you. Anyway, the first comment where she reveals that it was sold on eBay, of course, people naturally thought that she meant she had just sold it on eBay after posting the videos because she wasn't clear on her timeline. And so of course the first comment is like, oh, convenient. But she replies saying, convenience would be still having the doll in my possession. I only took two videos because I didn't like doing it. Now I wish I had taken more. Then she does, like I said before, she does show us conversations she has with the buyer of the doll. So they had contact in August 2022 when she sold the doll to her. And then she does show us the text where she does check in and ask if anything else has happened with the doll. But it's clear that the person who bought the doll from her is not a skeptic whatsoever and is responding how she's like asking the doll what her name is, which just to me tells me that she's believes that she totally believes that the doll is haunted without needing any proof of it. And so to me, of course, she's going to agree about that thing not moving or it was a bug that finally crawled out and was removed and she doesn't really know what you're talking about or she's talking about something else in the mouth but the buyer does agree like oh no i can confirm that that is not a bug <laughs> mm. 
Look, no hate to this person. She genuinely seems like a very nice person. Like, I do not want to dunk on them or anything like that. And I don't think it's intentional. Like, even if you are a believer, I think that you should be looking at this stuff with a skeptic eye. Even if you believe in ghosts, you should find any possible explanation that could possibly be it first, because the most likely explanation is the one that is often true. I just think it's a little silly to try to convince us that that's some sort of tooth that's just moving right before our eyes, rather than it being a maggot in an old antique doll. Which of those explanations makes more sense to you? Okay, let's move on. I'm getting worked up. The next one is from an account called Erica Justat Perry. If I'm saying your name wrong, I do apologize. So as we watch this video, pay very close attention to the left side of the screen, right as the camera is panning. Don't worry if you miss it though, I will replay it for you. You don't have to go back and replay it a million times if you don't want to. I will replay it for you and explain it. Okay, so I will play that for you again right here a little bit slower so that you can catch it. I will try to leave a picture there and stuff. In editing, I will help you see what it is that we're looking at. I will admit again, this one also got me for a bit and it might still have me. I really can't decide on this one. There is always a very rare video that while I'm always skeptic, I can't I can't quite explain it. So after reading a bunch of the comments, there's a simple explanation for this one that most skeptics agree on and that this is a lens flare, that it's a lens flare off of her camera that is reflecting off the smoke of the fire. Usually I, I'm all for these explanations. I love these explanations. For this particular video, I actually don't buy that explanation. Like, hear me out. A lens flare, at least from what I've seen, looks like a flare. It looks like a light. All of the pictures off of Google, and again, just like the sky weather phenomenon one, like the pictures on Google are not the tell-all be-all of everything. There might be a range of stuff that's not on there, but every lens flare example on Google does not look anything like this. So I looked up lens flare off of fire to try to see if I could find something similar. And again, none of them looked like that. So then I even tried lens flare ghost to see if anybody has had a similar thing happen where it looks specifically like a ghost because of a lens flare. And again, I can't find anything that looks like this. Mind you, I rewatched this video in slow motion a lot. I watched that one section where we see the thing quite a bit. It's weird to me that it actually looks like it's walking. Like the movement of it looks very much like an apparition kind of thing moving a into the smoke. Trust me, it pains me to say that. I do not like admitting that I'm unsure about being skeptical, but I will if I do truly can't find the skeptical theory to be the believable one. Now, it's important to note, a lot of people in the comments are saying that the dog is what proves it for them because the dog looks like it's tracking the figure and saw it before she did and is like watching around. I don't buy that particular part for a second. That dog is just doing what dogs do. It's with its pack, it's humans outside in the dark. Most dogs are gonna feel the need to watch out for their pack looks to me like the dog is just scanning the trees in the dark for any signs of a threat. I personally don't think the dog has anything to do with it. Now, do I think this is a real ghost sighting knowing me? Again, no, I don't. Not in my opinion. I think it's a little too convenient that it's super smoky right there and that we just can't see it very clearly and it's so quick. It could definitely be some other trick of the light or some weird thing going on with the smoke but I am willing to admit that I don't necessarily believe the lens flare one. I'm sorry, fellow skeptics, you can, you can come at me if you want. I don't blame you. 
but it's just not that promising. I don't know. I just don't see it. I'm not a photographer though. I'm not an expert in cameras. So maybe somebody that's an expert in cameras or that is a photographer could recreate this. I know that's asking a lot, but maybe they could recreate it or write a comment or send me an email about how a lens flare could look so nothing like a flare. I'd love to be proven wrong, but I'll be honest, I can't say this one is a hoax 100%. The last one we're going to talk about today, I was also tagged in quite a bit. This is from the account Biblioteca80. They posted this creepy video. It's not a paranormal video, surprisingly. I have tried to explain this to my friends and family before, and everyone's telling me that this is perfectly normal. Are you telling me that these three dudes, sometimes there's six, but today there's three because it is a little chilly out, are not waiting for some sort of instruction from their supreme overlord? I'm like 99% sure that's what's going on. Somebody else said maybe they're doing Tai Chi, but they're just standing there. And it is so creepy. <laughs> they do this every week and I don't know what's going on. What are you doing, weird dudes? Um, I, like they've been doing, they've been standing like that for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Like, I'm, I'm doing stuff on my computer in my office and I'm looking out there and these dudes are just standing there, like downloading their instructions from the mothership or I don't know what. It's just so weird. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm just, I'm so confused. I'm so confused. And also a little terrified that, you know, Is that their leader? Come back. No, I don't know what's going on. But listen, if I disappear in the night, uh, these guys did it. I'm like 99.999% sure that's what happens. So like I said, obviously this one isn't really paranormal. It is just plain creepy. And like many have suggested, I don't, how would this be Tai Chi? Doesn't Tai Chi involve some sort of movement, even if it's slow? Like that seems like a weird explanation. I'm pretty sure that's not it. Because like she said in the video, they're just standing there, not moving. And then everyone is telling her to call the police or like one former cop told her to call the non-emergency line. Then on the other hand, like they're not doing anything. They're not they're not committing a crime. They're on public property and they're just standing there. I, now, I'm not saying she shouldn't call the police. Like she could call them. In most cases, if you just call police and you tell them that you're feeling unsafe, they're willing to come and help you or check out the situation for you. But I also understand why she hasn't because it's not like they're coming on her property or anything like that. So she might just be kind of assessing the situation and probably like most of us with anxiety is worried about making a mountain out of a mole. Hill. The other possibility, of course, that we have to consider is that this is all staged and she has some of her friends dressed in all black and standing in the same position across the street and she takes a video of them just for a few minutes and then they leave immediately after she's done filming and they just did it to do something to go viral. This would be a great prank slash internet hoax if that is what happened because there's no way to disprove it. I mean, unless somebody that also uses TikTok and saw her video lives nearby and took a video of her setting up the scene, it would be very hard to disprove that that is what's going on. People are also kind of criticizing her sometimes for not being, not freaking out in the videos and acting so calm. But honestly, I also get that too. If this were me and I saw this, the first thing I'd probably do is call my mommy and ask her what she thinks I should do. Like that's probably honestly what I do. I would freak out. But then when I took a video of it, like I wasn't gonna, I wouldn't panic on the video. Like that would just panic other people. Like you'd just be filming it, make sure you could capture it. So I don't know, I guess I don't really blame her for not freaking out. And like she said in the video, they're not doing anything that would warrant her to freak out. They're just standing there. They're not like an immediate threat to her safety. So what is there to like panic about? All right, guys, those are the 10 TikToks. Um, you guys came out to play for this one. I really appreciate you all tagging me in TikToks. There's so many TikToks I'm tagged in. This video format could be my video format. 
every single week if I wanted to, and I would never run out of content because I'm tagged so much. And I appreciate that so much. Just thank you so much for tagging me. And thank you for finding interesting stuff to tag me in, not just the same like generic things moving in the corner videos. I love being tagged in so much. But the downside is that I simply can't cover it all. And I wish I could like talk about every video that you guys tag me in. And I simply can't do that. These videos take me many, many, many hours just to write the script for because of how much research and how I seem to go down a rabbit hole every single video that I get tagged in. So anyway, I just want to thank you guys. You're the ones that make these videos possible and I appreciate the interest in them. Don't forget to check out June's journey. And if you would please, please, please like the video, I would really appreciate it. It just helps out the channel a ton and it's easy and a free thing to do. And other than that, I will see you all in the next one. Thank you so much to all of our patrons. Special shout out to Top Tiers. Colin Holmes, The Deck of Cards, Michelle Valovinos, Tom L, Little Kittle Cat, Mitchell Schaefer Meyer, Mike, Alice Paul, Brittany Phillips, Willow Winchester, Bambi, Momo Neon, Philip J, Marita144, Sage K, Elderly Hipster, Reese Rolls, The Puppy Hag, Rebecca Jackson, Headless Fancy, Toby, Carter, Kawaka Anime and Gaming Convention, Sonder, Sarah the Crazy Fish Lady, Blood for the Koi, Larkar, Maxi, Ashley Danielle, Ellison Luna, Julieta, Cece Picard, Sophia Wood, A Bunny, apparently, Leon Vanek, Destiny Riley, Literally Lacey, and our newest, Elliot Fink. <laughs>